Hello there, my name is Tim Walter. I'm a house healer and an alternative life coach. And welcome to today's edition of Monday Moments, the programme in which I take the opportunity to answer some of your questions or reflect on some of the comments that you've made on any of the programmes on my channel. So welcome, and today we're going to touch on very briefly a few things about spirit, about the management, as my dear old mentor used to call them. Those things being, why do some spirits decide to stay close to our reality in order to help us while we're still alive in the physical realm? And also, when I'm working at doing dowsing projects or even doing things like this sometimes, why do I allow myself to be distracted by spirit? Okay, so all of that coming up. though the usual routine a little bit of YouTube housekeeping so do remember to hit the subscribe button and do click the grey bell icon if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video do click the thumbs up if you like what we're talking about and thumbs down if you're not so bothered and above all do leave a comment or a question that's really really helpful thank you very very much I will get back to you on the comment section but also I may pick your question to give a more full answer in a future edition of Monday moments so Today we have a couple of questions and the first one is really uh, when I'm doing projects, uh, doing dowsing projects uh, and even making these videos, um, one that I made recently was about pendulum dowsing, pendulum dowsing part one and uh, Regina has a question about the fact that I was distracted by spirit, by my spirit guide um, who was becoming quite not insistent because they could certainly get very much more insistent but, the, but he was wanting to express his uh, desire for a certain topic to be covered and that actually in that instance was spiritual dowsing. So Regina asked the question, do I consider that spirit should take priority, that the management should take priority over what I'm doing? And the answer to that is of course it depends. But if I'm healing on a house then absolutely for sure everything that I'm doing is through spirit, is working with the, the um, I call it intuition but it's Part of intuition, as far as I'm concerned, is working with the management and allowing that information to come through from them. I had another question from Socratech recently about had I ever um, interrogated the Akashic Records. Now to me, the information that comes through from spirit, being a, uh, a conscious entity, uh, a collective entity that has far more awareness and information available to it than we do in our seemingly separate existence down here on Earth, then I regard a lot of that as coming from the Akashic Records. The Akashic Records are said to be the records of all things that have happened and held within the etheric state, within the spirit state, within a different dimension to ours, um, but which are accessible from this dimension. So, the big thing that I really wanted to touch on in answer to sort of both of those questions really, but in, with particular reference to Regina's question, is that actually I don't regard our existence here on Earth as human beings as being completely separate from spirit anyway. I try to live my life and when I'm working with clients in the life coaching uh, area or in the house healing of course, I like to be able to talk to my clients in terms of us as spiritual beings because our very reality the existence in which we find ourselves all day every day is co-created not only by every seven and a half billion people on this on this planet but also by spirit themselves by the management and as i said before earth energy an aspect of earth energy the dynamic earth energy is part of the mechanism that that can be achieved through so I like to try to take this as a very, very practical spiritual outlook on life to be able to walk in step with spirit. And that comes from 20 years ago when I encountered the ghost that was living in our house and I started to learn more and more from her about just a way of development, a way of improving my own life. So a self-improvement process, a self-development process. And so that taught me over the years that we are in, integrally linked to spirit, that spirit is not a connection that is either there or it isn't, it is there all the time. And indeed as far as I can see, as far as I, I believe now, that actually within the quantum field of existence, the quantum field of possibility if you like, that exists all around us, then spirit is a part of that, waiting just to take form if we make the decisions and we choose to ask them to come forward 
for us. Now that might take a bit of getting used to, a bit of getting your head round, but it's the crucial thing is that we are not separate. We are not separate from them. Our existence here is guided. We have chosen to come down here. Even science says that our dimension is informed from another dimension. Of course, it doesn't talk about spirit. It doesn't talk about the management. But absolutely, I believe, and the way that I try to live my life, is that I recognise that my, man that my management, that this, my spirit guide is with me. And I can talk to them in my head at the drop of a hat. And they will answer, either audibly, and that goes in phases, or they'll talk through me if I'm talking to a client sometimes, so in, a, in the way that a medium will communicate words of spirit. Or they will communicate with me when I'm dousing, or they will simply show me things within reality. And this is the point I'm trying to get across, is that we all uh, individually, no matter where we are on our path of development, of self-development, we each have the ability to see the words of the management, and see the works of the management in our very lives every single day. Part of the skill is to actually see the messages that are being given to us, to actually see and pick up and understand and comprehend or maybe even just feel the messages that are coming through to us in the, what is presented to us in our lives. I'm going to talk more about this in future editions, not only of Monday Moments, but also of other, the bigger videos that I do later in the week. Hopefully some of that has made some sense. Now just to finish off with Daisy's question, Daisy asks, why do I think it is that some spirits choose to stay here in this physical realm and assist us with our lives on our journeys rather than move on into their own development? And she was asking that in particular reference to the lady that I met and lived with in the house, the deceased lady that we knew as Jane. Now Jane actually was no ordinary ghost and I will in future editions and in a book that I'm uh, about to start writing tell you much much more about the type of personality that Jane was in terms of a spiritual entity because she was a guardian energy, she was the guardian of the space of that house. So she had deceased, she had moved on, she'd gone into upstairs to the management, she'd gone through the process of, of, of renewing her life, if you like. She'd gone through that self-evaluation process that most of us seem to go through when we come to the end of a human life. We seem to go through, a, we seem to be allowed to judge our own actions in this lifetime and reflect upon them and decide for ourselves in consultation with the management whether we should come back again or continue on. Now I know that goes against many sort of belief systems, but to me that certainly seems to be the way that things are. And of course I mean no offence to any individual religion or any people that choose to believe differently. So um, Jane actually chose to come back and help me on my path this time round. And as I will tell you in the future, there are very many uh, aspects to Jane that actually were revealed, if you like, over the years um, that came to be uh, more understandable. Um, there are other types of ghosts, of course. There, I mean, there are other types of ghosts which are echoes within um, a, an affected house that may be giving detrimental energy. Those are slightly different. They can either have the, a very strong self-awareness um, or they can be just echoes from the ether. But there's also spirit guides and I will talk next time about spirit guides. Okay, so before we go, I've gone on a bit. Don't forget, Spirit and Earth is available in the USA and in the UK from both Amazon sites. If you want to know more about my views on life, the universe and everything and how we communicate with spirit and what spirit's about and why so many of us are waking up right now at this point in the 21st century, then it's in there. And the book I'm about to start writing is about my experiences with Jane and the significance of earth energy that I learnt from her 
and from my mentor and really comes through my path of development to take us right up to the point of now. All the best. I'll speak to you again next week. I'll speak to you later in the week. Do have a good one. Take care.